Episode 12. Welcome back. Yeah. Awesome to have you. This isn't Yosemite like no. we promised in episode 11. we will be coming from one of the most iconic national parks in North America. We'll love you and leave you guys. Much love. I'm sorry. We are sorry about that. Hopefully the change of season and the crispy hues. Yes, autumn is here. We'll make up for our slight misdirection <laughs> last episode. What happened, Maddie? Why did we not uh, get to our recording in Yosemite as planned? Oh, there was just too much to do. Yep. Too much to see and do. What we is Yosemite were... for those who don't? No. It's a large national park in California, in the US. Very well known, very popular. It's on, you know, all the backgrounds of your Mac, yep. if you haven't noticed. Yeah, which I took years to realise. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is truly stunning. We're very lucky to get last minute camping spots there for the week and also to get a permit to do the very famous Half Dome hike, which is also very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but Hence why you need a permit. That's our middle name and that's what we do. <laughs> yes. Yep. It was like Maddie's birthday, which was just an amazing way to spend yeah. a birthday week together. Yeah. Similar like how my birthday week was Burning Man. Yeah. Like we, we really focused on experiential mm. gifts and, and, and doing things together. Mm. We were also fortunate to be able to um, pitch Flight Centre, who we've been doing ongoing content for, to capture some of while we were there. Yeah. So I think, yeah, between all the days of filming, between trying to recover from that dip and the massive half dome hike, which yeah. took a lot out of us. Yeah. Um, by the time we looked at our available yeah. <laughs> schedule, we're like, I don't think we're going to record. Yeah. What stood out for you, though? Um, I guess half dome kind of was probably the pinnacle, no pun intended, of uh, Yeah, I mean, Half Dome was such an experience. Why did you really want to do it? And what what is about Half Dome? Well, I didn't really know about it. I'd I'd heard about it. And then when we were, like, looking at where we were going next after, like, Tahoe, I was like, ooh, Yosemite. And I'd always wanted to go to Yosemite. And then I was looking at, like, hikes to do in Yosemite. And this one just kept popping up. Mm. And it was clear that, yeah. and then I was reading about it and I was like, oh my God, I got Drew. We can't I, not do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I read about it and how like difficult it is and, you know, it's such an achievement if you can do it. Um, and I was like very drawn to doing it because that kind of stuff like lights me up. Yeah. And I said to you, I was like, I think we should try to do it. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, we we're very lucky, got a permit. The thing I want to give credit to for Maddie was unlike a previous all day hike we'd done that was like 28 kilometers at like Lake Garibaldi. We broke it up by yeah. getting a campground, yes. which I thought was, was a really, really good call from yes. you. So some people can try to do basically 13 kilometres one way, and then at the end of your one direction, you'd then do the ascent up half dome, which is challenging if you're fatigued, oh, yeah. if you don't have the upper body strength. It can yeah. be pretty exhausting. And if you're doing it at the end of the day, like it's just a tough gear. And then you've got to turn around and do all and that back. all that back as well so in the same day. it's a huge day. Like it takes people like 12 to 16 100%. hours. 100%. So we learned our lesson. And yeah. I'm grateful Maddie, Maddie booked a campsite that was about five kilometers from the summit. So we yeah. could wake up in the morning fresh yeah. and then make the most of kind of getting there. Yes. Uh, which was which is definitely kind of the way to do it. The way to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. If but, you're not like super fit. Because yeah. I, I looked at that. And I, sa- I said, I don't think I can do that. Mm, like, mm. I, I just when, know myself. We, we, we know yeah. that, like, we could push it. We could. But the recovery would, and be, the, smashed. would be smashed and yeah. the injury. And, and I all probably that stuff. wouldn't have got up. Probably wouldn't have tried to actually yeah. do the last part of the ascent. Yeah. Which we will get to yeah. in a little bit. But then the weather was very treacherous. Yeah. Do you want to talk about what happened there? Weather was like, we just had this interesting thing of like <laughs> having weather changes or, you know, we've been chasing this like eternal summer from our entire last six months of travel. And it feels like it finally caught up with us that like this one week in fall, right, which like there's no need for the weather to dip to like winter conditions, went from like high teens, low 20s to like low zeros, Zero, <laughs> low singles. Zero degrees. Literally and to snow. like high tens and snow yeah. um, predicted near some of the peaks that we were coming into. And we were like, what is going on? And yeah. there was just this cold snap that was coming in across the coast yeah. and sweeping into Yosemite. And it was right when we were doing our hike. So we were unsure we're a little bit, yeah. if we would be able to even do it because yeah. when we got to like the the part where you yeah. start to get onto the granite boulder, which is very unprotected, very mm, slippery, mm. there's like a ranger usually there yeah. and you have to present your permit and there was a sign being like, where there is indeterminate snow is predicted, yeah. um, don't be Just stupid don't do basically. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, like, yeah I don't get stupid. paid. It said, I don't get paid okay. enough for therapy. <laughs> Because they have yeah. to do the search. And, and, on, and on a serious yeah. note, like, yeah, if you don't know, like, it's yeah. so treacherous that people have died in yes. the past. Like, yeah. not, not in comparison to the hundreds of thousands, you no. know, the thousands that have successfully yeah. done the ascent. But it's always bad weather. It's, it's bad weather. Usually. Yeah. It's, it's, ba- it's bad yeah. weather and someone probably just not being smart. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, if it ever looks bad, don't do it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I think 
you know, that's one of the challenges about um, doing the hike is that you can get all the way there. You right, it's just massive a massive effort. Yeah. And then you're fully at the mercy of what the weather is. If the weather's not good, you can try sit there, you can wait it out. And if the whole day, a whole morning isn't good, mm. sometimes you just have to pack it up and go and yeah. make your return. Yeah. But I think we just had this like miracle break that we had a first day that was chilly. Yeah. Had a bit of a chilly overnight. Overcast, rugged up bit in of thermals. Rain. Yep. Got nice and warm and then got up the next day. Yeah. Charged and ready to go. Um, and both had different experiences of what Half Dome looked like. Mm. Um, just to, I guess, just to, yeah, give you a, an idea is you have a, I guess it's divided into two portions. The first part you can climb is called Subdome. Mm. And that in itself is still like a wonderful lookout. I'll overlay some clips right now. And also right now, it catches you know. a lot of people off guard. Like that is hard in itself. That is, that yeah. is. Yeah, that is absolutely. And so just yeah. to give you, yeah, some, some clips and some reference, even from Subdome, as you can see, you still get a really good look out over the yeah. valleys and over either side. And that's still a great achievement to make it there. Yeah. It's still pretty challenging. Um, and then you kind of sit there and then you look at this like, <laughs> this just raw rock cliff face that ascends with this very like, yeah. I don't know, flaky kind of like, um, what is it? The rope and chains haven't been, they're installed like in the 70s or what was it? A hundred years, years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, they, they update the, the, the thread, but it's basically the same pylons that are drilled into the rock face. Yeah. Um, and everyone kind of stands there and you just, you see it across everyone. Everyone's like calculating. Oh can I do this Can or I not? do this? Am I fit? Yeah. And whatnot. And, and yeah, that's a real game. Um, how were you feeling when you got to that point at Subdome? Yeah, I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And I was full like packing it in. <laughs> I was really like, Bruh. and everyone around us was putting harnesses on. <laughs> and I said to this one American guy i was like do you have a harness hell yeah i have a harness i got kids at home <laughs> and the, but we talked to the rangers and they said don't have a harness if you haven't used one before it's more trouble than it's worth and i saw that afterwards yeah. of people who yeah mm. almost caused more hassles up there than it was worth with the harness mm. but um mm. yeah i was freaking out for sure yeah and then i was like nope i've come all this way i'm gonna give it a go mm -hmm. But I think I was a bit soft on myself. I think I was like, oh, you know, like this is still, like still an achievement to make it here. And I was kind of like, you know, keeping it safe. Hedge, you were hedging a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was. You kind of had I that. really was like, I was doubting my strength as well, which I think was a valid concern because we have not done any That's strength training at all. Yeah, and then yeah. when we did it, so we, we, we assented and... We'd waited for this big gap. We we're like, okay, right, now's our yep. time. But then there was all and these by, people by banking. Gap, what do you mean by gap? As in, if people. No, no one up ahead of us. No one coming down. So we kind of had a clear space because you have to share the path with mm. people coming down. Mm. So, and there was all these people banked up behind us as well, which I didn't realize. And so I went off. Off we went, we and, we, and we, we powered. We powered. But I. <laughs> I like You're very quickly it. humbled by how much upper body, upper body strength pulling up on those yeah, cables. I was like full pulling myself up and yeah, then my arms yeah. were shaking. Yeah. And that was the moment that I didn't prepare for. The moment where you go, yeah. oh shit, I don't yeah. know if I can do this. Kinda, I'm you hurting. Hit, you hit that wall. Yeah. And you tried to like talk me out of it. You're yeah. like, what's going on? Like, you know. Yeah, I was like, let's talk it through. And I just immediately going? was like, I'm going down. Yeah, you shut down very quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, I didn't want to push. But no. I'm deep down, I was like, I know she I know she pushed through this. Yeah. I know she keep going. I know. And then in my head, I was like, I don't have a harness. All it's holding me is my arms. Yes. If my arms give out, yeah. basically which, is, which is a valid thought. Fall. Which is a valid thought. Yeah, but then I didn't think about, oh, okay, I can just stop here and rest my arms. Um, but the reason why I didn't do that was because I, I turned around and I yeah. saw all these people yeah. behind me and it, and it, looking up at me, waiting. Oh, and then I was out. like, ah, oh, fuck it. Like, I'll just <laughs> come down. Um, but little, I regret not just being like, not worrying about others and just being like, guys, I just need to take a rest. Yep. If you you can overtake past, me. You yeah. can overtake. Because you weren't, you weren't an inconvenience because you didn't have a harness. So people yeah. didn't have to like lock off and then lock around you. Yeah. They, you know what I mean? Like you could just move out or you could help yeah. jump to the other side if they yeah. needed to. But we didn't yeah. know all this coming into it. No. And it was literally, I really would describe it and you've used the phrase as a yeah. crisis of confidence. Yeah, I had a crisis of confidence yeah. for sure. It, yeah. it was just this, this momentary, yeah. it just yeah. threw you. It yeah. really just threw you. Yeah. And yeah. so... Maddie gracefully. And I also, just, yeah. also, I was not in the best mindset going up because we'd had yeah. um, a little bit of a rougher morning. Yeah, we did. And it did, throw, did. It threw me off we, a little bit. We came bit. off on different yeah. wavelengths and, yeah. and um, yeah. it just put our, I think, put our synchronicity a little bit off. Mm. And then it's like... And we, I'm very, like, I'm very sensitive to that. Yeah. So, yeah, it just, 
There was just a few things. There was a multitude of things that kind of went wrong. Yeah. But in the same vein, I'm still happy I'm safe. I, you know, like, yeah, yeah, straight and up. I, and it was achievement in itself getting there. But then I, I was watching. I sat, went down. Dan Fair, went up. And yeah. I was watching everyone. Yeah. And I was like... And then everyone was taking it real slow. Real slow. And I was People like, I could have done that. And then I, yeah. So I, I learned were a you, lot were, about were, myself. Yeah, yeah. In that, like, yeah. yeah, I need to not tap out so quickly mm. and be prepared to push past those mental barriers and care about your mindset when you're about to do something that's really, really challenging. Of course, I know this. I've done competitive sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. like, I haven't done it in I a I think we just hadn't been, we hadn't been in the arena for a while. So that, that, yeah. that habit and that... that you know that operating system yeah. wasn't quite locked into because it is I. more of a mindset. Thing it is than, way more mindset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what were you thinking, by the way, when you descended and you saw everyone going up in the slow? Because I was up at the top and I didn't know if I had reception on my phone, but yeah. I was thinking, I was like, oh, can I somehow maybe like wave at Maddie and get her to come up? Because I reckon like second time she could do it. Yeah, I, I know. Think she's rested. I know, like, and were, I were thought I did, I did. I thought about giving it another go, and then. I was worried about like how long it would take and like then Yeah, and there were way more people in front of you by the time. Yeah, you and I just yeah. I don't know, I was kinda like, no, nah, I'll just keep I'll just wait here. But I do regret not giving it another go. So how would you embrace yourself differently or both of us coming into that? Would it have been like, Hey, there might be a time. I think maybe when we're I, tap out. Yeah, I think having more of a chat before going into doing mm. something like that. Mm. And um giving you permission to like yeah. Push me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you yeah. didn't want to push me because I was like very yeah. like, oh no, I'm going, I'm going down. And and, also and it was unsafe, point, and it's it unsafe, unsafe. Yeah, and it's yeah. like a pretty scary thing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah. And to your point as well, also because there wasn't as much synchronicity with us in the morning, yeah. and we we're a little bit off. Yes. I think I might have had more goodwill. Totally. I could have totally. banked on to push you a bit harder. Yes. But then I was like, well, we weren't connected, and you were yes. like very like shut down, and I was yeah. like, oh, okay, maybe I'll let this battle yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. So I also own that as well. I'm, I'm just as much a part of it. Yeah. Because I felt I felt a bit emotional when I got to the top, and like yeah. so many of the experiences that we've been doing the last six months, seven months, mm. like are so special because they're shared yeah like 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 life is better shared with yes. people that you love that you do things with intentionally and i mm. i didn't i didn't cry but like i mm. i just i just felt it i was like yeah you know, i got the initial adrenaline the rush mm. and the dopamine of being up there and and oh my goodness i did it mm. and i was like and then kind of you want to turn and like hug someone or share it with someone or take Aww. a selfie with someone anyway oh, in that moment that. it's all good yeah. um mm. and yeah I, I got some content for flight center that was all good but even just on a personal note mm. for these experiences um, you know, I'm I'm still immensely grateful though that you took a positive lesson from it. Yeah, and, you know, I learned more entire, from you know? that experience of right. like about yeah. myself than if I had have gone. Than if up you had and gone up, it. right? Yeah. And I think that that's the magic. Yeah. Where some where like you know that didn't stain your memory of Half Dome. Yeah. And forevermore as a couple, we look at that with yeah. a really negative lens. Yeah. You know, we actually grew a lot from from mm. the, the disagreements we had in the morning or the mm. challenges you having that, and then even mm. just talking it through. Mm. And that's why I really wanted to make an emphasis that we like you know share it here and capture it here mm. um, before we kind of lose the lesson because as much of our holidays always look like peaks. There's also pits, mm. quote unquote, that happen, um, and ironically, like you said, that's where more it's usually more memorable, yeah. and you usually learn more in those, those yeah. situations. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not as glamorous as what I think people think it is. Yep, amen, <laughs> amen. Fan life is not glamorous. Oh wow, at all. Hey. and it takes a lot to uh, yeah be able to do it. Yeah. I I I genuinely believe that a lot of people are just not cut out for it, and that's fair. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think we may have shared this in, oh, bloody heck, episode one, two, and three, is that the charm is we weren't just a couple of, like, urban city slickers that suddenly had an epiphany, bought a ticket, and then were good for the van. Yeah. I think as we've shared, and I'm so grateful yeah. for this, like, we've done, like, sl like streaks of camping, mm. hiking, van life. We've, done, we've van life twice before. Yeah. We've backpacked-ish before. Mm. We're okay with kind of, like, I wouldn't call it rougher sleeping, but, like, we don't need five-star accommodation all the time. Mm. We can enjoy it, but we can also, mm. I don't know, wild camp in a well, recreational even, center car. Not even five know? star. Just like having all your needs and yeah. basics yeah, yeah. always available. Always available. That so, is not yeah. the case when you live in a van yeah. without a toilet and a shower. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I think it might be a, a fitting a fitting link because Yosemite um, came off the back of uh, a house that we had the week before in Lake Tahoe. Mm. Um, and we... Yeah, we basically started this into van life. And typically over this last six months, we've usually done two, maximum three week van life stints before having another house sit to come into. Mm. And this period was the one that was kind of probably the longest we've gone yeah. off the back of 
pre-Burning Man, Burning Man, a week in a house sit, then back to a van in Yosemite, then back to road tripping. Mm. It doesn't help when you throw in an injury. No. So we've done like basically two months bar a week yep. in the van. In the van. Which is probably the most we've ever done. Yeah. And my back is definitely not okay with it. <laughs> oh, man. I love the GMC. We love the GMC. You say you love the GMC. But yep. my back does not love yep. it. Yeah. And I have had previous back injuries, so I know this is this is not a new thing for me. Like yep. I'm very aware of it. But I've been a, it's been a long time since I've ever had a back flare up. Mm. Long, long time. And I was literally just thinking the other day, man, I'm doing so good. Yeah. <laughs> I cursed it, of course. But, like, the post- our posture in the van is so bad, and I think just the nature of the life we're living, it's not conducive to yep. having good posture and core strength and yeah. back health. And, of course, we went to the gym, hadn't been to the gym in so long. Yeah, and I was that's like, where you layer it back. Oh, there it goes. Because I don't know if the gym was the catalyst. Van life, it's bending over is not great, but I think that gym session for both of us might have tipped us over because yeah yeah but it wasn't know. the gym session just did it it would have been yeah. like it's yeah, it's yeah. never it it's been. never the the one thing it's yeah. like the lead up to it yeah. like the lack of strength that i've you Amen. know not Amen. trained Amen. Yeah. um and so i'm just over it <laughs> so wow. over it there you go so you're getting peaks <laughs> half dome you're in pits injuries <laughs> yeah like camping in our van you said was amazing yeah, and like yeah. i loved it and the hacking was good but now like this week it's all come <laughs> crashing down so it's uh, it's 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 no surprise as well yeah. this is the week of mark six months yeah. and that might be a, a fitting way of giving you the real a broader recap we, we said we wanted to share it in today's yeah today's episode we've touched on a few already of really all the, the peaks and pits of mm. whether you call it digital nomads whether you want to call us van lifers mm. whatever this lifestyle is um you know skilled vagabonds whatever title you want to give us um maddie shared a beautiful article recently that i'm going to actually link um, in the description, wherever you're watching this or listening to this anyway, if you prefer to read. Um, but we thought we'd actually just riff and, and give a little bit more of our personal colour on, yeah, the mm. other elements of nomad life, for not just the last month in particular, but now six months. Because mm. I think it's fair to say that, like, we're not veterans, but we've, we've, we've done a good stint. Mm. You know, the first month or so, we were very rosy and tinty-eyed and everything was magic and wonderful and all exciting and whatnot, and we didn't have, you know, really those tough moments. So I think now we've, we've lived through a few seasons of doing it. Mm. Um, had quite a few challenging moments, some that I won't share on the podcast to protect <laughs> to protect some, some of the antics we've been up to. Um, but kicking things off with like some of the highs for you as a nomad, what um, what comes to mind? Um, um, yeah, if we're like putting experiences aside, mm. I would say just like the slow mornings. Yeah. Like yeah. we don't set an alarm. Mm-hmm. We cuddle we just take it easy read my book Mm -hmm. like we eat breakfast in the sun out in nature like I love it it's so good and I'm just like soaking it all up and to also have a normal circadian rhythm yes it's a highlight and sleep very soundly oh my goodness in the bed and get get the two hours of deep sleep eight nine hour sleeps Mm. it feels pretty good yeah Yeah. a slower lifestyle for you what's your Mm. I think, um, yeah, what I've really enjoyed is I shared this with Maddie last night. I don't think this one's necessarily in the, in the sub stack, but it's if you snapshot any like 48 mm. to 96 hour window and you just look at like the versatility and the range of things that we can do or mm. that we do do, it's like I sometimes have to actually stop and take real appreciation that, you know, we can go from um, – cold dipping in a lake in the morning (laughs) to road tripping Mm. to working in a cafe doing work that inspires us if it's your research project or some of the Mm. content I'm creating or Mm. education for my for my community um Mm. and then in the evening you know we're cooking like uh an amazing kind of like I don't know salmon salmon bowl bowl, whatever it's really scrumptious in a place that is like you know alongside the beach or whatever after like a sauna session or a gym session that maybe didn't go so well so (laughs) it's like you know we're we're, there's just so much like I guess there's so much um not novelty but just like Mm. variety more we get to do yeah. and I think sometimes unless I stop and pause and appreciate yeah. that the, we have the freedom and the flexibility to do that and it's yeah. not like we're bumming around it's not like we're yeah. doing nothing it's not like we're not doing holidays yeah. we're just being able to fill more of our time with things that really inspire us yeah. and it's really liberating so it's yeah. been a massive yeah. a massive high for me or, or, yeah. or a big highlight for anyone who, who this kind of lifestyle you know appeals yeah. to anyway totally any others um, off the top of your head I would say like Doing the work that we're doing with Flight Center. Yeah, uh, that, that's yeah. a big one for me as well. Yeah, yeah getting to work together as a couple has been 
really cool, yep. challenging, yep. Um, but, you know, ultimately a really positive experience and we have had so much freedom with creating these videos mm. and yes. tapping into, Center. like, yeah, our creativity and I like that we have, like, you know, I do a lot more of the research, the scripting and you do obviously all of the editing and... Um, it's been really fun and we just pinch ourselves on the days that we film. We're like, how are we getting paid to do this? Pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I really don't have anything to yeah. add other than we have complementary skill sets. And mm-hmm. while I can say from my side as kind of the, the phrase that I've had to embody as a one person operator is like, you're the chief everything officer. <laughs> so traditionally, yeah, I do pre-production, which is scripting, writing, ideating, storyboarding, you know, location scouting, blah, blah, blah. Then the recording all on my own, then all the editing. Um, but it's really nice actually just to be able to like let Maddie shine in a strength of hers that she was already doing mm. outside of commercializing it. She yeah. was already the powerhouse in our relationship of like finding travel great itineries. places, and travel yeah. like, re- and not just yeah. like does it because it felt like a chore, does it because like you really enjoy having yeah. good travel itineraries and, yeah. and staying in beautiful places yeah. and seeing really cool things yes. and, and just knowing where I you're going. I care about the experience. And that you we care have. about the experience. Yeah. And I'm like, well, when, and for me, it's like when the experience is taken care of and off my yeah. hands which is, you know, something I probably struggle with a lot of like delegating as a solopreneur mm. and getting help mm. is that it's like it actually lets me focus more on the creative element mm. of how do I tell a better story, how do I execute, mm. how do I focus on all the technical stuff that Maddie doesn't need to worry about mm. and then we kind of combine together mm. um, and, yeah, that's been, that's been really, really like rewarding and fulfilling mm. for me, whether we were doing it to get paid or whether we're doing it just to kind of like anyway, work on a project yeah. together. You know, it's so easy to be like, you work your career, I work my career. Yeah. We come home, we spend an hour at dinner doing things together. And like, you know, we're not building or, something or together. building something together. Yeah, whether it's commercial or not. So mm. I think like, again, my takeaway, if you're in this, this position where you're either pivoting careers or you're using this year of travel to kind of like figure things out, like just do the projects with no expectation, whatever it is. If it's writing a sub stack or creating mm. content for the first time um, or doing a, a new side hustle that like no one has to know about, that you don't even have to commercialize. Like, I think, yeah, this is an, a window to, to lean into it. And I've just mm. loved that we've had a lot of creative autonomy, even with this podcast and, and mm. your writing, to mm. kind of share as we want to without yeah. this needs to be performative. We need to monetize this. Mm. So, yeah, Flight Center has been a massive bonus to that as well. Yeah. Mm. Totally. Anything else? On the highs, I do want to hit them with the reality, hit them with the. <laughs> Yeah. With the other side. I mean, we've knowing. already touched on the lows. Being like van life is not glamorous and yeah. you've got to be okay to deal with those non-glamorous sides 100%. to enjoy the flexibility, freedom yes. and nature and, yeah. you know, everything that it brings. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That, that, that's the perfect yeah. way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. Um, another it's low necessary. light is obviously we're not seeing our friends and family mm. and, you know, um, our little fairy boy back home. Oh, <laughs> big boy. So I, mean, I miss them and I'm like, relationships is like one of my highest values and yep. so I think it's particularly like front of front and centre for me, um, especially like having had birthdays and like mm. a lot of family birthdays recently. Mm. So mm. I, I miss that a lot. Yeah. I miss them a lot, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, but in good news... We're seeing some close friends of mine yep. very soon. That's really cool. Actually today. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, going on an extended trip with some of my girlfriends, which will be amazing. Where, where, where's the, the trip with the girlfriends? Girls Gone Wild in? Mexico. Far out. This is, da- <laughs> this is dangerous. Yep. And then my parents are also coming over. So wow. Like, Wait. It's, it's all, it's all going to be I feel okay. Like, I feel yeah. like you've somehow been able to magnetize and bring that value of relationship. Yeah, yeah, has yeah. Come, You've actually managed to <laughs> somehow bend in. reality and bring it to you, which is. <laughs> bring it to the Northern Hemisphere. You, you brought it to the Northern Hemisphere. There's something well, powerful about that. I don't know. Mexico is not in the Northern Hemisphere, but uh, central. I'll, I'll bring it Central. To, to let's say this. This, this continent. This, this, continent, this continent. This broader continent. Let's just go yes, with that. Yes. Central North. Yeah. Which is really special. Um, yeah. Something yeah. I'll, I'll throw For out. You? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's like, to be honest, and um, I'll, this came off a conversation I had with a, a very good friend of mine um, I had recently, but it's like, when you are van lifing, you have to be able to accept that um, routines and habits are going to be thrown. Mm. And if you're someone who like lives by the book and I've had seasons in my life where I've just been like meticulous with like yeah. not missing the beat on every aspect of my life. Um, I think I had a really yeah hard, hard time shifting that mindset until um, my friend um, Lockie, if you're listening to this, thank you so much for the guidance you gave me on this call. 
which was like just to embrace the disorder and to embrace the chaos because that's what this year actually is mm. about. Um, and maybe I didn't fr- I didn't set that expectation myself that I was thinking, all right, Dan, yeah. you're still going to do 10,000 steps a day and you're going to drink three litres of water <laughs> and you're going to get to the gym three times a week and you're going to read for 10 pages a day and all this stuff that I've been doing for years. Mm. And it's kind of like, well, you know, the whole season or focus of my life has changed and I'm not going through this rigorous period of like evolution and growth and blah, blah, blah. It's like I did all of that in the last three, four years so that we could enjoy this year as well as we could. Mm. And, um, yeah, if you're someone who um, needs routine to operate or you think you do, I'd either challenge you because you're not really going to get it with van life um, and you might be able to see that more fluid side of yourself that's out there. But, yeah, it is a downside that, you know, um, you're you're packing things up, you're always in a suitcase, you're moving into house sits, moving back into vans, um, you're in kind of crammed quarters and I guess the other side off the back of that is like, also creating boundaries and time away from each other each is other hard. is yeah. hard. It is hard when you're when you live bedroom, this. kitchen and transport is the same thing yeah. and organising kind of half days yeah. or, or days aside. Yeah. Um, that is really tricky. And I love Maddie, but yes. it's like my love for her and my appreciation for her, it wanes yeah. when all I do is spend 24-7 yeah. with her. Yeah. And then there's and no likewise. novelty. There's no yeah. like... What did you get up to? Tell me something new. It's like we did yeah. everything together. Yeah. We had the same meal together. We yeah. saw the same sites together. We, just, we, we drove the same, from here we drove to here, here together. We, we, we <laughs> listened to the same audio book together. It's like whatever. And, it, and it's like I think we, you need that, <laughs> that, need, that, yeah, that, totally. that tension that comes from distance. Totally. Um, totally. You know, and that time apart, yeah. which is which is really true. So yeah. that's something I'd say as a bit of a, not a criticism, but as like something I could do better and I want to do better going forwards. But um, yeah, it can be tricky if you're getting cabin fever and or the weather's cold and you're locked in. But the positive side of that mm. is that we have been able to work on a, on our relationship, oh, man. like up close oh, and personal. Man. Like there's Pressure a cooker, lot man. that has come up yeah. and um, I just don't think it would come up yeah. if we were just living in a house yeah. doing our normal it, thing. It is accelerated growth yeah. in, in your and relationship, which is communication, like we've really had to yeah. get quick at addressing yeah. uncomfortable things. Yeah. Yeah, um, and long-standing patches that previously you could let go. Yeah, or like you know, we just you know by having a bit of distance, it's like it's not as in your face. It's exactly yeah. correct, correct. Yeah, and or you can be distracted by like all the other things going on in your life. Yeah, it's like, like I your could life go your to partner, like you know you my friends or, you know, or work, yeah. and it wouldn't yeah. like yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's front of mind because you keep yeah. getting that reminder with that person being. Yeah, there. it's like it's the elephant in the room. Or I, yeah. need to, I need to address it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I hmm. agree. So yeah. yeah. Negative to a positive. Yeah. Anything else or all the others are in the sub stack if you want to check it out? Yeah. But I just thought, yeah, we, we give you the real raw, yeah. um, unfiltered yeah. version of van life that, you know, there's a reason why I'm not trying to post as many hashtag van life curated yeah. filtered photos on Instagram yeah, because because so that represents that 1% of the entire trip. Yeah. And if you're not willing to go through that 99% of yeah. Challenges and getting sick and homesickness and living mm. in close quarters, you mm. won't get those peaks that mm. are there. So, mm. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Neutrality there. Yeah. Right. We have uh, made our way up the West Coast. We have. So we road tripped from Yosemite. Yep. Yosemite made our way up. All the way in. Up. Yep. Went through San Fran. A little detour through San Fran. That was a fun fun experience. Yeah. Yeah. And where are we, where are we back to now so we've done a full loop well not really a direct loop we've found our way kind of, back to yeah. getting to vancouver where yeah. as maddie mentioned we'll be connecting with one of her good friends and their partner yeah uh do a little house sit we're actually crossing the border again coming back into yeah. the u.s but then we are returning where we started literally yes. episode one of this yes. podcast in a little place called north sandwich on vancouver Island. yes so how did that happen? And why are we in the same house we were because before? Because they loved us. So beautiful house sitters customers. there. Our repeat house sitters, which that's is the best. That's the best is review beautiful. is that they asked you to come back. Yeah. <laughs> and when when they offered it, we thought, oh, should we? Should, should we? we? And yeah. now we are so yeah. We need grateful. this so much. We're I we have done like so much outward energy. Yeah. We've been like eternal yeah, summer man, outward etern- for yes, like yes. You know, we left in summer, end of summer Australia. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah, basically yeah. came into like spring yeah, into summer. Next Summer, 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 and we've summer. been, yeah. Now it's just like we need some inward energy. We need to go in, Very just well relax, well not relax, but relaxed, like just like recuperate. Yeah, Is recuperate. Yeah. Hibernate, as I would in nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we had an I will be on the couch summer. with my Akatar series. Akatar series. If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. Amazing. My fairy smut. <laughs> She said it. She said it. There you go. Look it up if, you, if you're no, interested. Uh, we've, we've got work, though. We've, we've, we've got, got work, work to tuck into. That's some awesome so, work. So yeah. nice to be in one place with the, yeah. the beautiful dog, a little keep us moving. Yeah. Love it. 
Well, depending on how we track over the next few weeks, I don't like making promises. Yeah. But we've had a very, as, Matt, as Maddie said, an internal summer and a very yeah. busy six months of travel. Yeah. And we wanted to document while we were on the road because mm. that's often when things are surfacing and we're yeah. up to experiences. But this may well and truly be the last episode of this season before we figure out what we want to do in the next part. But we'll see where we go. If we pop up somewhere between here yeah. uh, and Vancouver Island, we'll yeah. have another one. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Love you and leave you. Bye. See ya. Thank you.